So again, same idea, ladies and gentlemen. If we're going to find the x and the y-intercepts in this case, the x-intercepts, y is equal to 0. Now again, 0 equals negative times x minus 1 squared times x plus 2 cubed times x minus 3. Now I'm going to show you guys something very, very important here. Okay, It's a little bit different because it might be obvious what the zeros are. But if we apply this zero product property, what I want you guys to see on this is If I want to find the zeros, right, do I need to add 1 and then take the square root? What do I do? Take the square root first and then add 1, right? Now, when I take the square root, do I do plus or minus 0? No, because 0 is not negative or positive. So as x equal to 1. What I want you to do here, then, if I'm going to solve this, then I'm just taking the cube root of both sides. Yes? And then here, I'm just adding 3. So what I want you guys to understand is, no matter what power it was raised to, did that affect the x-intercept or the 0? Was that like the same as my last example? They had the same zeros and stuff like that, right? So, and would it matter if I raised these to like the 7th or the 8th power? Would that change where the x-intercepts are? No, because all you do in your solving is you just take the 7th root and the 8th root, right? However, that doesn't mean those numbers have no effect. Because we're going to look at the graph, and they do have an effect. But I want you guys to understand, for the solving portion, you could have just looked at this and said, the x-intercepts are at x equals 1, negative 2, and 3. It doesn't really matter what these powers are. Now, the powers are going to tell us something, but, they're not, but they don't change where the graph, where the x-intercepts are, or the zeros. Let's just look at the y-intercept real quick, because this one's a little bit more complicated. Why didn't that work last time? Oh, it did, OK. It was, no. Oh, yeah, it wasn't raised to the third power. That's right. OK, so now we have negative 1 squared, which is going to be a positive 1. We have 2 raised to the third power, which is 8. And we have 0 times 3, which is a negative um, 3. So therefore, we have negative 1 times 8, which is negative 8 times 3 is 24. So we could say y is equal to 24 or 0 comma 24. Correct? All right, so now let's go and look at our graph, see if we did our math correct, because we don't